Good afternoon, everybody from SeaWorld. Today, we are coming here to check out the Seven Seas Food Fest, one of my favorite fests here in Central Florida. We also brought our GoPro today, so we're gonna do some on-ride footage for you guys. I know it's been a little while since we've brought you guys along on any rides, even over at Disney. I feel like we just haven't done a lot of on-ride stuff for you. So today, we got the GoPro, gonna get you some of that, gonna try out some food here, hopefully have a pretty good day. It is quite windy, but today is the hottest day we've had all year at about 89 degrees. Love to see it. Pipeline just made an announcement that they were having some technical issues. I do also want to point out, I think on Manta, you can actually get a decent visual of Penguin Trek. So maybe I'll try and do that for you guys. We're on there. It looks like it's coming up here soon. I think we have AP previews coming in just a few months also. So really excited about that. I'm sure you guys can hear the brutal wind right now, but you can definitely see the flags going pretty nuts. I was a little nervous that the rides wouldn't be open, but I think we're gonna be okay today. Nicole and I were here off camera just like two or three days ago, and there was like no lines. Everything was a walk-on. It was incredible. Today, a little bit of a different story. SeaWorld is definitely a locals park, so I feel like a lot of locals come here on the weekends, so the crowd levels are definitely increased. Also, Seven Seas going on, I feel like a lot of people are here to try out some of the food. Now, one of my favorite parts about SeaWorld is that you get these punch cards, and as a pass holder, you get a few extra. So you can see you get a total of 18 punches for the price of 15. They actually used to be a little bit better, in my opinion. I feel like they used to be like 18 for the price of like 12. So I do feel like they kind of came down on that a little bit, but it's not too bad. So 85 bucks, you're gonna get 18 samples. Really, really good value, in my opinion. I wish like Epcot would start doing that, or even Universal. Granted, Universal has a great option with their gift card. It's actually a little bit more diverse, so I think Universal is the best option, to be completely honest with you. But this is kind of nice too, just to be able to get those extra punches. All right, we have just picked up our punch card here again. One big thing about SeaWorld is everything is taxed. So it says $85, end up paying $95 for it. So again, a little pricey after like the price that you see. They do that pretty much on everything. So there is always a little bit of tax. Either way, excited that I have $95 worth of value. I think it's a little bit more. Now it's going to be time to go try some food and ride some rides here again. Everything is up and operational right now. I don't know how long the lines are gonna be though. So it's kind of nice, typically this line, at least like the first booths are really, really long. I don't think we're gonna have that long of lines right now. However, do you hear the wires just rattling on this ride right here? It's not going today for obvious reasons. First booth here is gonna be the All American Market. We're gonna go ahead and try out these Cannonball Chicken Wings. Normally $12, but it will be one punch for us. There they are right there, new this year. Also, for past members exclusive, oh my gosh, there's everything is flying around, the wind's going crazy. But March 1st through the 31st, we can get this nice chocolate chip cookie sandwich, so we're gonna pick that up as well. Now we're gonna actually head inside to eat because it's a little windy, so we'll find a spot in here. Also looks pretty empty, again, not super busy today. Sweet deal, so we got three chicken wings and then our ice cream sandwich there, so excited about that. I totally forgot that they had that this month and we just saw the sign, so that kind of lucked out for us. And you get three wings, like I said, very meaty looking wings, which is always a little nervous for me because I feel like sometimes that it's too chewy. But we'll let you know, they smell fantastic. These have a really good flavor. Um, they almost remind me of like the Buffalo Wild Wings barbecue wings, like the sweet barbecue one. Not like spicy or tangy, just like a really good flavor. But they are also like those jumbo kind of like chewy chicken wings. But overall, they're really good. Well, it is super bright outside and we are by the window here, but I would have to say that was a very, very good wing. The sauce was like a nine out of 10, maybe a 10 out of 10. Very, very good. Quality of the wing was a little bit lower. I'd say like a six or seven, but honestly, that sauce is really good. Highly recommend those. And SeaWorld just, they always do well with their food. I feel like these festivals and just in general, I feel like they do pretty good with their food overall. But yeah, that was a hit. I would definitely recommend just the cannonball sauce wings. Really good. Very messy on the cookie sandwiches. The cookies themselves, not super soft. Ice cream is pretty good. It was a vanilla bean. If you can tell, it's got like those little black speckles in it, so it's a vanilla bean. Uh, it was good, not my favorite dessert that they've had. Feels like a pretty standard cookie sandwich, but a little refreshing with the ice cream in there. What do you think? 
as your. It's messy. Eating. It is. It's super, super messy. But it's, it's just about flavor. The cookies are a little hard, but the ice cream's good, and the sprinkles are a nice touch. I like sprinkles. Over here at the Polynesian Market, right next door, as we continue on, they do have a returning favorite, which is the smoked lamb ribs and then the ahi tuna nachos there. But neither of them are new this year. However, I do see that frozen Polynesian summer. That looks kind of good. And we did it. We went ahead and did this frozen Polynesian summer. Is that what it was? Or Polynesian sunset? In summer, yep. Po yeah, there we go. It is actually frozen though. I feel like a lot of their drinks aren't frozen. Looks like there's like some like weird like white chunkies on top there. How's the flavor? Strong alcohol flavor, okay. but also strong coconut flavor. It's good. Like it's alcoholy, but it's not like the burn alcoholy. I don't know what those chunks are. A little, a little weird. All right, I'm gonna try this out with the the mold or whatever's on top here. Oh, that's good. It tastes like a, something you'd get in like a breakfast, almost like, I don't know, that's good. This is probably the best drink we've gotten from Seven Seas and like overall. I feel like the drinks have been kind of hit or miss. This is definitely a hit. I do need to point out, for those of you that don't know, the alcohol is always in a smaller portion. If you buy alcohol at these booths, you get like a normal size. The alcohol punch is always going to be like these smaller cups, by the way. All right, we're gonna take a little bit of a break from our food and hopefully not chuck it up here as we go on Manta, but I wanna show you guys the Penguin Trek construction because you can see it, it's like right next to Manta. So we're gonna hop in and let you guys see a little visual here. We're gonna hopefully get you a visual of Penguin Trek. Here we go. Hopefully you guys were able to see a little bit of Penguin Trek here. I'll show you just like where we're looking right now so you guys can kind of see it. So it is all over there. You can see all of this white track next to the blue track. So right here is Manta. And it literally, I mean like you're inside of where they're working right now. It's very, very close. Not a very tall coaster. I believe it's going to be a more family friendly coaster, kind of like Great Bear Mountain or Big Bear Mountain, whatever that is over at Dollywood. It's kind of what I'm guessing this is going to be. But again, I think the tallest it is is actually like right here which is not very tall, but it is coming, I believe, in the next few months. So hopefully, like I said, we get some AP previews coming up here soon. Because Penguin Trek is being worked on, you can't cut through here behind Manta, so you actually have to come like all the way to the front of the park when you wanna head back over. Either way, heading back to get some more food. We have a lot of punches to get through. We've done three so far out of our 18. Those are basically the free ones that you get being a pass holder. We are now making our way into some more food booths out this way and they did bring back a lot of food from last year but they do have again a number of new items so hopefully we try out a few new things for you guys. Again one of my favorite food fests in like Central Florida, I'm not even lying to you guys, I just think they do such a good job here. So they do have some returning favorites here, fish and chips and the lobster roll and they have a Boston cream cheesecake that's actually kind of interesting sounding and then a Liberty Limeade which is a Windermere Brewing Company any uh, fruit sour there, so if you like sours, that might be pretty good. Oh, moose juice. Are we over in Universal right now? So they have these like alcoholic drinks here for the coaster cocktails. They had them last year, and I don't think we loved too many of them. I think we tried at least two, maybe three of them, but they do have a non-alcoholic version for Penguin Trek, which is interesting because again, it's kind of like a kiddie coaster. Not a kiddie coaster, I don't want to say that. It's a family coaster. Definitely still going to be a little intense for the little ones, but that's nice that it's like non-alcoholic. It kind of follows that theme. Over here, we are coming up to Italy. It is down here in this like little cubby area, and the new item is a mini calzone. Definitely gonna go try that out. Let's head that way. Also, the Italian cannoli, I think, was actually really good last year. It was either really good or not great, but I thought it was actually really good. Look at the size of these chocolate cupcakes. The tops on those are like triple the size of the actual cupcakes. The cupcakes still at Bush Gardens were my favorite cupcake I've ever had. And I don't know if I would say like my favorite dessert like ever, but I feel like that's pretty close because they were so good. Well, this is gonna be a fast review because they didn't have the calzones for the day. They were all sold out. So we got the uh, mini cannolis here, but we already had these last year and I know that they were good. So 
that really stinks. I guess we'll have to come back soon, but I was really looking forward to those. We have a beautiful sunset. Ooh, I just got hit by a bug. Uh, we have a beautiful sunset behind us there, but cannoli, not as good as last year, weirdly enough. It was a little bit more soft and very like cheesy. Normally, I feel like that's pretty good. This time, not as good, unfortunately. But again, being out of that calzone was quite the bummer. Continuing on, hopefully they're not out of anything else because there's a few items we really want to try today and that was a real big bummer. As we are moving forward, we are coming up here to the Irish market right now and it's actually a little bit of the St. Patrick's Day celebration here for about a week right now and it looked like they had some decent options. Oh, this is unique actually. Oh yeah, look at that. So you can get a green bud light, a shamrock of sour, and then a beef shepherd's pie here. And I think this is actually only for the uh, St. Patrick's Day celebration. So I think this is only going on for about a week right now. It looks like all of their entree items are all new this year as well. So they have those St. Patrick's Day nachos, the bangers and mash, and a Jameson donut. All sound definitely interesting. They also do have a Bailey's Irish Cream cold brew coffee here, which actually is probably pretty good. But we did end up actually going with the St. Patrick's Day special, which is that uh, shepherd pie. So looking forward to that. Let's go find a table here. Also, we're losing a little bit of sunlight here, but tonight we do actually spring ahead. So we're gonna lose an hour of sleep, but it's going to be like this an hour later. So I'm very excited we're finally getting more sunlight. I'm gonna be completely honest with you guys. I don't know if I've ever tried a shepherd's pie of any sort. It looks kind of good. It looks like this is like a piped on mashed potato or something. You know how like sometimes they could pipe it? It's kind of what it looks like to me. Here we go. Shepherd's pie. Have you ever had a shepherd's pie? I don't think so, but it's good. It's like a ground beef pie, but it's like um, like a chicken pot pie crust with flavored ground beef and potatoes and peas. Here we go. First ever Dylan trying a shepherd's pie. Ooh, that's actually pretty good. It kind of reminds me of like, I don't know. We had, Nicole pointed out, like we had empanadas at another festival. It kind of does remind me a little bit of that, like a little bit of a sweeter kind of unique seasoning to the meat. But I like that. That's how shepherd's pie normally is. I think I would get these more often at these restaurants, especially like over at Springs. I think they have like that Irish restaurant. I'm sure they probably have a fantastic shepherd's pie. I do want to mention just very briefly again, you cannot get this if you are not here during this week though, because again, it is limited for their St. Patrick's Day celebration. So as soon as all of this is done, I'm guessing that is done at the Irish market, unless they decide that it's such a hit that they continue selling it. But the other items that were there on the menu will be here for the entire festival. I think this is only here for the week for St. Patrick's Day. All right, next up here over at the Mediterranean market, we do have the new walking Euro. You ever heard of that? I've heard of walking tacos and even other versions of walking whatevers. Never a walking Euro. Now, I'm actually not the hugest fan of uh, Euros in general, but right next door at the Indian market, we see a chicken tikka masala, and I love tikka masala. And this thing looks interesting, so I'm gonna try this. It's an Indian funnel cake with wildflower honey. All right, we picked up a nice little feast here. We have the walking Euro. So it looks like you almost get these like pita style chips with like slices of the Euro meat there. Again, here was this like a, a jalebi, jalebi, I don't even know how you pronounce this thing. And then the chicken tikka masala. That's a good tikka masala. Nicole does not like that flavor though, if I'm not mistaken. I how do you like it? It's, it's me, it's not them. I yeah. just don't really like Indian food. Yeah, I think this was actually uh, pretty good overall. I think I've had a little bit better tikka masala from some other places, but that was actually pretty good. And uh, again, I feel like Indian food typically get a nice portion, however, I think that's a massive that's a portion. Huge portion. Yeah, that is a lot of food. All right, how is the walking euro? I told them I was like, I, I don't really love euros, so. I love tzatziki sauce. I can't get over how big of a portion it is and how much meat you get. I like actual pita that's softer better, but I think the pita chip to make like a walking taco, walking gyro, is a really good idea. The sauce is good, the meat is good. Overall, it's a really good dish. Well, the chips are a little crunchy, but overall. It's actually a pretty decent euro. I gotta give them credit because I feel like euro is such a unique flavor and such a unique thing to get. To be able to pull it off in a theme park, I think it's really good. So good on you, SeaWorld. So this is by no means oh. a normal funnel cake. Push into that a little bit. Oh, Very crunchy. I, I broke it. Yeah, that's crazy. So I don't know if it's like more fried or what, but definitely a crunchier consistency versus that typical like softer with a little bit of a harder shell. There we go. All right, bottoms up. Uh, it is very crunchy, but almost chewy. 
Hmm, that is unique. So at first I thought I wasn't gonna like it, and then I kind of kept eating it, and it's a little sweet. It's not very like typical funnel cake style. It's, it's unique with a little bit of sweetness coming from that honey. It's actually kind of good. Here she goes, trying it out. Let me know, the initial bite is weird, but then it gets better. There's something about it. I like it. I like the, um, the crunchiness to it, and it's not overly sweet, but I'm not the biggest fan of honey. So I think I almost wish there was like powdered sugar and honey, so it's not just like raw honey on it. But I like it. Well, I think I can confidently recommend all three items here. So chicken tikka masala is a go. The walking gyro is a go, right? You said that was good? Oh, good. Yeah, so she liked that a lot. And then again, I don't know, jellebi, jellebi, J-A-L-E-B-I, however you pronounce it, that's a go. Three good items. Let's take a crack and break really quick. We are rapidly losing sunlight here. We are at booth 17 over here, which is the Asian market. I don't know how much more we're gonna be able to do as the sun is coming down again. Moving forward, we are gonna be having a lot more sun, which is a huge positive. I know, right? Pump it I up. I love it. I would like to ask really quick though, we are going on a cruise here tomorrow, no, two days now. We are heading out to Port Canaveral and going on a cruise. If you guys wanna see some cruising content, make sure to subscribe to the channel. Also, if you just wanna see more theme park content, anything here around the Orlando area, that's another kind of big thing we do here. Feel free to subscribe based on that as well. Either way, we are gonna grab some water, grab some drinks, head over to Icebreaker, but again, we are kind of losing a lot of sunlight here. We are gonna have a lot of sun on that cruise. I'm looking forward to it. We have to get ready, but I don't know. I feel like as of now, today was kind of a little bit cloudy and I'm just hoping we are seeing 70 degree weather coming for the cruise and I'm a little nervous about that because I was hoping to have like 80 plus. I don't know, we'll see, especially when you're on a boat moving. I don't know if the breeze, is it gonna be cold? I don't think so. One item I would not recommend at this fest, and it is probably the only thing that I can just consistently not recommend, is the pretzel here from the Waterway Grill here. It's just, I don't know, it's just not very good. We have arrived to Icebreaker. This is always the longest wait because it's a single train on this kind of like shifting track. I have to say, I think that the comfort collar is being removed, and they have been for a while now, we just haven't done it in a while, is actually a lot better. What do you think? Oh, I totally agree. I feel like they were digging into my collarbone the entire time and this is so much more comfortable. I love the ride. Yeah, isn't it funny? Comfort collars are less comfortable than not comfort collars. Either way, it is a lot better, so I do recommend checking it out. It's a lot of fun. Still a very long line if you don't have Quick Queue. Thankfully, we have Quick Queue after four right now, thanks to being annual pass holders for the month of March, so that's always a huge plus. Well, that is going to wrap it up either way for us here at SeaWorld. We tried a number of items. We have about nine or 10 punches left, so we gotta come back for round two. This pipeline is taking off behind us here. But either way, thank you guys for hanging out with us today. The next video you guys will see from us will be cruise related content. So hopefully you guys enjoy some of that. Either way, we'll see you guys in the next video. Take care.